Hello, my name is Sip Mendes. Welcome to Sip's Wood Chips. For today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this segmented bow. And this bow is the first one I've made that actually has a pattern in it. Um, this bow is made mostly from uh, scrap that I had laying around the shop. I had a piece of cherry. And most of the rings were made uh, long ago. When I was learning to make segmented bowls, I made several rings and uh, they were just laying around. I had actually cut all the pieces for this layer quite some time ago, but never got around to actually using them. And uh, this ring, it could have gone on here. I, I wish I would have found it sooner. But uh, this pattern, the way I made it, was I made a strip of wood. This is walnut. And I took some ash and put a piece uh, like that and another piece like that. And then I laminated those together. And then I cut my, uh, my uh, wedges. So then each wedge looked like this. And I took a small piece of uh, ash and placed it on the edge like this. And um, then glued them all together. And with all projects, make sure you read, understand, and follow all instructions that come with your power tools and equipment. Woodworking is fun, but it's important to work safely. I'm mostly going to work with some scraps I have here. In learning how to make these segmented bowls, I've made several rings that I've never used. And uh, this one I, I made today, and it's still drying. But what I really want to work on is this ring here. I'm going to glue that together and then I'm going to also use this piece of cherry. I'm going to go ahead and, and cut that and make the bottom ring. <laughs> Springtime there's, there's a lot of birds so if you hear uh, uh, morning doves and uh, red birds, well it's that time of the season. Oh, this is the ring I've been working on. And um, this is what the wedges look like. And if you need uh, any help with cutting the wedges, there's uh, several other videos uh, in, on my website that shows you how to do these. These are all cut at, at uh, they're 30 degree wedges. That means they're cut at 15 degrees each side on uh, the chop saw there. So right now I have the um, clamp. I'm using these large hose clamps put them glue it together and it's going to be made up of wedges with separators. The, the grain on the separators are going to go up and down and while all of the other uh, pieces the grain is going to be going uh, sideways. So let's start get started. And I'm just using uh, yellow carpenter's glue. I gotta work pretty quick here because I got a lot of surfaces to do. And, uh, we'll take out a piece to make it a little easier. And we'll put, make sure the grain goes up and down. Like that. And the outside of these wedges have to be against the outside ring. And I'm gonna just glue, put glue on the uh, on one side. Rub them around real good. Again, make sure the grain. And this, these uh, pieces, they're made of walnut. And the lighter wood is ash. That'll give me some good contrast. got these extra wedges that means it's that that many more surfaces to do and I'm working on just a piece of wax paper and this is end grain that I'm putting the glue on so it tends to really absorb the glue really quick so I need to put like a little extra these little wedges are cut at 15 degrees, and the outside uh, length is just about uh, one and a half inches. And when you add these little quarter inch 
separators, then it's going to be about uh, one and Once you get started on putting these together, you can't, can't stop very long. Keep going. You've got to watch out for sawdust. Sawdust is another little problem. If you get sawdust in there, then they're not going to want to come together quite right. So I'm going to need a, a screwdriver. Make sure I've got plenty of room in this one. And I'll put glue on both sides of this one. So what I'm going to do is try to get all the pieces out against the uh, band clamp. I want the clamp to be centered, that means it's got to be off the surface there. And I'm just going to get it only snug because I've got to move pieces in and out. These are sticking up a little bit, but hopefully I can get those on the sander and the sand them. Just sand them off rather than trying to cut them off. Okay. Getting a little tension on there now. Make sure they're all down. Make sure they're all out to the outer edge. Okay, here we go. And that looks good. And I have a quarter inch blade. Set my my uh, guides down a little bit here. And uh, these are those cool blocks I've been trying out, and they have made a big difference in my saw and how it cuts. So uh, I'm just going to cut out this circle and this circle is about four and a half inches no this, is about, this circle is about five and a half inches 14 uh, centimeters. And there's my circle. I'm also going to use a uh, glue block. And so I'm going to glue that on to my piece of cherry. And there's already brown paper on one side. I'm going to attach my uh, glue block, just some yellow glue, and what I really need is a clamp. And I'm 
just going to set it in here. This is my little four inch sander. Let me start it up. turned out pretty good. Nice and flat and um, I'm going to have a good side and a bad side. The good side was the one where they're just perfectly flush. The other side were the ones that were sticking up and this this will keep them from catching on my tool when I start turning. I'm going to go ahead and do the other two and I'll do these only on one side. Remember to use your first face shield. And it doesn't help having a face shield that's covered with dust, so I always give it a, a good a wipe, wipe off all the dust so you can see through it. So I'll just put a little bit of glue on here. Just try to get it where the come into contact with each other. And I'll put glue on both sides. Okay. So the one with the smallest diameter, that's the bottom one. This I need to glue on quite completely, almost completely. this, I'm going to line it up by spacing the, um, making sure everything is centered right. This is just a uh, piece of scrap wood, happens to be circular. So I'm going to look at the back and make sure that it's the same distance to the low parts of each one. And uh, get it as best I can. I can look at, across it and see that they're the same distance, and look across these sides, and they're approximately the same distance. And when I'm satisfied, all I need is just a little bit of pr pressure to make sure I get squeezed out all the way around. And I'll remove the excess with the paper towel. It doesn't do any harm, it just that it stays raw and doesn't dry unless it's very, very thin. This has been drying about two hours, and I'm going to just take this off. And there's a lot of wet glue on the inside here that didn't wipe out, wipe off, which is okay because it's going to still have more time to dry. 
what I'm going to do is just round the outside of this and then prepare this surface here. Face shield. down a little bit more so we've got some spots there. on there. I'm going to turn on my dust collector. It's going to get noisy or else I'll just skip over it. light glue on this on each side. Okay. And I went ahead and sanded both sides because I want these stripes to be about the same thickness. Decided that would be better. I'm going to center this. This is going to be easier to center because it's only a little bit larger than that one.
the flat parts of the uh, pattern disc are just a little bit larger than the uh, other one. So that should center up pretty good. I'm ready to put on this next ring. And um, <clears throat> I'm not going to sand it on glue. So we're going to put some glue on here. side too. And again, I'm just going to Go, again, I'm going to stagger these a bit. I'm going to try to get this centered as best as I can. So I want the seams in this one to line up with the seams in that one. It'll look better. I'm going to try to get them uh, as close to centered as possible. It's not too bad there. pressure on it. Hmm. Looks pretty good. Gotta remember this is very much totally unrehearsed. So it's going to be very much a freestyle project. It's been drying probably about uh, five or six hours now, and I think I'm going to go ahead and start uh, shaping the outside and see what that looks like and see what the pattern looks like on, on these bands here. Okay, a tennis ball probably would have been better, but I'm going to put this little plate up here to give me a little bit better support. Let's see what happens with the bowl gouge. Well, this looks pretty good. This still needs has a way to go. It's still not not round yet. A little 
wax on my uh, tool rest. Okay. So this is all scrap, so it wasn't very much were very well planned at all. So it, it's going to go through its stages. This ring is smaller, so that means that all these other ones are also going to be smaller because I want this one to be pretty much parallel. I think I can go uh, a little faster. I was spinning at 500 RPMs. That's about 650. I'm going to use my scraper for a little while. looking too bad. These little dark spots here, that's where it still needs to be a little bit deeper. Okay, lighting at this angle is going to be a bit of a problem, but then as I open this up, I should be able to get a little bit more light in there. And um, again, I'm going back to my round nose. Keep getting caught by that um, bow gouge. I think it's just a little bit too rough. Let me even it up and then we can probably get in there. Okay. So I'm start, starting to hit some of the... the uh, little pieces of ash in there that are sticking up. So this is a little bit of a progress report. I've kind of been uh, how, hollowing out the inside of this and I have not worked much on the outside at all. But I did give it a coating of um, sanding sealer and I gave this uh, patterned uh, layer gave it a coat of sanding sealer to bring out the colors and see what it really looks like these uh, little pieces these separators here they seem to be chipping out a little bit so um, sanding sealer might help that a little bit I'm still gonna take this down quite a bit more I'm gonna try to take it down at least another quarter inch or so leave only about a quarter inch because it's and that will probably be better and give me more room on the inside. The center can go down a little bit deeper also. I've got quite a ways to go there. I've been having a hard time actually getting in there with a, uh, a light and a camera. And I'll uh, work on it offline and show you what it's like a little bit later. Uh, my camera was in the wrong mode a while ago. And uh, I went ahead and shaped the outside a little bit more, got rid of the low spots. The grain is still open on the end grain here. And there's something right in there. I don't know what that is. And um, there's also an uh, open end grain over here. So I'm going to give it another coat of sanding sealer, let that dry up, and I'll start working on the inside again.
Okay, I guess that opened it up. That opened it up quite a bit. See more down in there. Okay, it's thin here, but it still needs to be go deeper. I think I need to go deeper and uh, a little wider in the bottom. Well, that's about as much as I can get in there, and it's relatively smooth. Let's give it some sanding sealer, and then sand in. I'll do the sanding offline. The only part I really need to concentrate on now is this part here. It's got a lot of open grain, and it's a little bit uh, uh, porous. You can feel it. I've given it several coats of. Uh, sanding sealer and that has helped and I want to get this seam a little bit deeper and I want it to taper more right in here it's a little bit lumpier than I would like and I think I'm gonna move up to a thousand RPMs now should be pretty well balanced Okay, well that looks better. And the grain closed up quite a bit. So it's, there are some little pieces in here and I can't tell what they are. But they lay down when, when I uh, go over it. And then uh, it rises if, when you I pull the other way. And I don't know if they're little knots. Maybe they're little knots or something. Or little bird's eyes that never formed quite right and I'm gonna go ahead and um, this one here has got a little bit of a lump in it and I'm gonna go ahead and just blend that in a little bit more shavings are coming off so thin it's, that uh, round nose it's getting to the almost scary sharp okay I think that's about what I'm gonna do with it when I when I sand it all around these edges uh, just soften them and uh, that should do it and I'll do the sanding offline Thank you so much for watching the video. Here's my finished bowl. And I'll uh, put a few more close ups at the end. If you've enjoyed this video, click on like. If you're not a subscriber, click on subscribe. It's quick, it's easy. You can uh, ask questions, get answers, and leave comments. And to me, the comments are the most important part. Your comments are always welcome. And I appreciate greatly for uh, viewing my videos. So, until next time, take care.